All right. And after that comes everyone who makes our work possible. The Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation is a non uh, is a member supported nonprofit organization in partnership with the Management Association of the Philippines. And it is only through the generosity and support of all of our members, our individual members, our corporate members, our special uh, partner institutions and senior special partner institutions, uh, that we are able to bring you our sessions every week to find our speakers and to engage in our activities for uh, poverty alleviation through job creation. And so we thank each and every single one of you. Uh, again, as I said, it is with, uh, without your generosity and uh, support, we would not be able to bring you uh, everything that we do with you. Okay, so with that, um, once again, good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone who's joining us today. We have uh, 33 people already online, uh, and it's great to see so many people come join us for what I think will, will be a very, very exciting topic this morning, as always. Um, and uh, if you are joining us uh, two weeks later to our social media uploads, welcome. Uh, we hope that today's session will, will bring you some value, that maybe you'll learn something. Uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask the speaker, because of course, unfortunately, you can't talk to a video, but you can leave your questions in the comments down below, or you can you know share with us what you've learned. Maybe you have some experience with agroforestry and you'd like to uh, tell us about it, or anything that you'd like to say, please give us a comment. Uh, if you feel that we've brought you value in any way and you'd like to gain access to our wide network of agribusiness and countryside development organizations and professionals, you'd like to join us for our informal sessions after our form, uh, after the up, after the formal sessions we upload uh, and engage with the speaker or see if there are any other projects or collaborations that you'd like to bring to our attention uh, do consider joining us as a member our links are in the description you can email us introduce yourself and we'd be very happy to have you on board so with that i'd like to invite our chairman uh chair ernie ordonez to introduce our speaker for this morning ernie please uh, thank you, President Julius. We are totally honored to have a very distinguished person. I would call him a revolutionary uh, because he's uh, revolutionizing a lot of what we have in agriculture. So let me give you a brief background. Um, he went from being a surgeon to be a revolutionary in agriculture. Um, he was actually uh, working in the parties and decided to break away in 2021 and build three non-existing industries. That's why I call him a revolutionary. What are the three? The three are flower tourism, car tourism, wow, timber production, which we need a lot of, and agar wood, which can yield 83 million pesos uh, in uh, in five years in one hectare. Uh, actually, uh, he can do all that, but he'll concentrate on the topics which we'll introduce him later regarding his own background. He's actually a value chain expert uh, called upon by ABB. Right, uh, clinical research analyst. Uh, he's VP, Vice President of Sustainable Tree Farmers Group, right in the Philippines. He's a consultant also of the Development Bank of the Philippines, administrator of Philippine Native Tree Enthusiasts, and he's published uh, 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 books such as the one on Philippine Native Trees. Right now, uh, important thing is this uh, for every speaker, especially people listening worldwide. Uh, thanks to the the board, uh, the board led by Julius, we've gone from thirty um, face to face to six hundred worldwide. Um, we'd like to ask first of all him before he starts to give his contact number, because um, people call from all over the world, and rather than go through the bureaucracy, you know, a letter asking for an appointment, they can call it straight, right? But but in, interestingly, uh, basically, uh, what we have here is a situation where we want him to tell us for five or 10 minutes his personal life. We want a personal relationship with him because what we do is in between forms, we talk to the speaker and others talk to him because the mission that given to us by our departed Chair Ramon El Osorio, back of course by Bernie, yeah, uh, who has been doing this thing for, you know, like uh, every week for uh, all 20 years or so, is they said uh, our foundation is not just knowledge, it is really transfer knowledge uh, so that people can use this knowledge to uh, have agribusiness development, but, also, but most importantly, poverty reduction, I repeat, poverty reduction. What we get is what we have here. We try to work in between forms 
and outside the forums to help do poverty reduction. So however we our speaker wants us to do it, sometimes it's through contacts with banks or uh, government or networking, etc. So the first one, um, Dr. Ephraim Cercado, they, they want us to call him M, Dr. M. What they want is for you to tell us for five to 10 minutes uh, how you came into this, briefly how your life is, but that takes too long. So we'll make that in a few minutes, but how you got into this and why you're passionate about this. You want a personal connection to you, right? Five or 10 minutes. Then after that, go into your talk. And as part of the talk, uh, you must tell us how we can spread your mission because that's our objective, not just to be educated and learn, but take this knowledge into action and give it to others through po to achieve poverty reduction. So let me start by asking first your number, and then you can start the presentation. Dr. M, would you be kind enough to give us your office number or your cell number or whatever number you have so we, the audience, can contact you? My, my contact number is 0917-551-5029. Uh, thank you. Some of you just give the office number, so you give us a cell number. Thank you so much for easy access. And as I said, the audience, both here and virtually, I would like to let you know that we don't go through bureaucracy. You can go straight to the speaker if you wish. And of course, what you do is we try to keep a record of what happens under forums so we see how we can help reduce poverty. All right. So without further ado, I'd like to let you meet a retired surgeon who gave up surgery in a very big multinational company to be a revolutionary and help poverty reduction through his innovative revolutionary moves. So on that note, Dr. M, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sir Ernie. I'll start with sharing your objectives. Our objectives will be detailing the three agroforestry industries which are not existent to Philippines. So these are agrowood. It's an 83 million pesos per hectare per five years. And flower tourism industry currently for Japan is $6 billion every year. And then you have the timber production industry, which is for New Zealand, it's 5.5 billion US dollars per year, which is an income. For definition, so agroforestry. Well, incidentally, uh, excuse me, uh, Doctor, if you don't mind, you want a personal relationship. Tell us how you, why you went from surgery to this, and what your passion is. We like to know oh, a bit okay. of personal life. <laughs> a few five minutes. <laughs> Tell us about your life. You know what yeah, got yeah. into this, etc. Uh, it, it's better to start in twenty twenty one. My mother was uh, scolding me that time, so she was telling me that uh, M, you're a surgeon and you're a medical research specialist for Novartis, and you have very nice income. And what you want to do right now is you want to leave all that and go into business related to plants. So coming from her that time, it sounded really bad the way she said it. Um, I don't know if you have parents like that. <laughs> but she had very reasonable concerns. Uh, the income was good. But the problem was the lack of time in my profession. So if, if you have friends doc, who are doctors, relatives who are doctors, I, I'm sure you do, you would understand what I mean. If you text them, sometimes they would reply after three days. You're lucky if they reply after three days. That's how little time we had. And the work is stressful. If the operation was bad, the patient was really bad, you cannot sleep for several days. So... Um, if you've heard the expression that earning money is hard, we have to kill people. Have you heard that expression? Well, it was more difficult for us because earning money is harder for us because we have to make people live. Do you realize how much more difficult that is? So that's what our situation was. I, I wanted a high recurring income. So I saw agroforestry because it was low maintenance, but the income was good. Uh, I experienced this personally in 2011 to 2014. I was buying mahogany plantations in Romblon, and then I was selling them in Manila. The income, the income was very good. So um, I experienced dealing with permitting, government, the fun things. And the lumber yards, they were trying to buy native species at much, much higher prices. So that, that's where my passion for native trees started. 
And then we started studying other agroforestry products, rubber trees, palcata, jamelina, palm oil, you name it. So we studied all that. Uh, but when we did the math and the research, they most of them most of them were not really profitable. Uh, in, in the process of studying all this, uh, we were we, we killed a lot before we became successful. Uh, thank goodness we weren't discussing patients, so we were discussing plants in practice. So in 2016, I got introduced to Agarwood as part of our portfolio. And I, I I did not take notice of it immediately. I snubbed the whole concept. I heard how high the value was. And my first thought was, this is too good to be true, which is probably the same reaction for those who know about it right now. But it warranted further in, um, investigation and research. So around this time, 2016, I had a fair share of recognition in the field of Philippine native trees. But I'm not really an expert in identification. Value chain was what I know how to do. So we took the most profitable of agroforestry lines. So this is agroforestry production, timber plantations, and flower parks. We retained this. We focused on these three. And we developed a profitable excuse to plant and propagate native trees. So then we Excuse incorporated me. the business in 2020. Sorry, but at that, that time, the big problem was um, I, I couldn't make the jump, the transition, because uh, I couldn't leave my stable, high-paying job. I mean... Uh, doc, sorry, uh, I have to interrupt. Um, we have some guests who... Uh, some members of the audience who can't hear you. Uh, oh. Although in, in my case, it's coming across loud and clear, but... I think uh, maybe if you have a microphone that you could uh, move closer to so that uh, some of our other audience members, I think it might be because they're listening in from their smartphones and I think How the is volume. Uh, yeah, so maybe you can, if you have a microphone, you could speak a little louder into the microphone or uh, something like that. Thank you. Sorry to uh, interrupt. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's okay. Is this better now? Is this better? Uh, I'll I'll wait for some of their comments to come in. Please continue. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I'll try to speak louder too. So, um, it was hard for me to make the jump that time. The transition to leave my job, it was quite hard. I mean, if you were in my position, you're a doctor, you studied for 13 years, then go into a uncertainty of business, would you do it? Uh, of course, the management association people are successful businessmen, so I, I know you. it's easy for you. But it was scary for me at that time. And then COVID happened. Um, we all saw the effects of COVID. Businesses are still closing right now, except online services and except for agroforestry. So my career and my company were losing that time, but agroforestry projects came rushing in. So in 2021, I finally answered God's calling in my life. I used the 13 years of education I had for medicine to go into farming, uh, specifically an agroforester and a value chain expert. Uh, apparently, you need a medical degree to go into farming nowadays. So <laughs> it's complicated. And what we do now, we make profitability a really good excuse to plant native trees. We honor God. We fight climate change, we build a nation, we preserve the biodiversity, and we create wealth. So that's how we got into this position where we are right now. That's the story. Uh, Mr. President, that's fantastic. Uh, Dr. M, that is really inspiring, and we now know your background. You even mentioned God and building a nation. That inspires us. Uh, please proceed with your presentation. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just enlarge the screen. Um, we'll be discussing the details of these three agroforestry businesses, and the coverage will cover three important topics, but I will not discuss this directly. 
So what we will want to show you is there is return of investment in decarbonization and biodiversity programs, profitability in biodiversity, Philippine native trees propagation. And we are going to show you right now innovations in climate change projects. So uh, this is, these are my credentials again on the screen. And this is where the company is right now since incorporating in 2020. We already have, since 2021, we now have 51 partners. We have 74 plantation sites nationwide. We are growing every month. We've been able to populate 95 hectares with more than 66,000 native trees with an 88% survival rate. So everything we're doing is legal and above board. So that's where we are right now. Without further ado, I'll discuss the details. Agarwood is our most popular business line where most people come in to partner with us. So the picture you see on your screen, the dark colored chips, that is Agarwood. And the main use for Agarwood is just perfume. It's just perfume all over the world. But it is so expensive. And why is it so expensive? Because it is written in the Quran. The Quran says that the Islam race has to use agarwood in their daily rituals. The consumption for UAE alone is 160,000 kilograms every year. And this was 2014 figures. And you have Saudi Arabia, you have Oman, Qatar, Iran, Iraq you have 22 Arab countries all consuming agarwood. And then you have China and Japan and Korea and all major perfume companies in the world. This is already more than half of the global population generating the demand. We just didn't know about this until 2018. So because of that demand, these are the prices. We're talking about per kilogram prices. Uh, I know some of the attendees are familiar with this. If not, you look at the reference on the bottom of your screen to verify that these are actual existing figures for the price of agarwood. The one on top is the legal international prices. The one on the bottom is the black market pricing for the Philippines. So let's go to the international legal prices. For rejects, I repeat, for rejects, it's 24,000 pesos per kilogram. For the highest quality of agarwood, it sells for 5 to 6 million pesos per kilo. Those are legal international prices. The black market pricing in the Philippines, the bottom columns, is no papers. It's illegal trade. The floor price is 200,000 pesos per kilo. The higher end is 900,000 pesos per kilo. Once they bring this to Singapore and Middle East, they can sell this for double or triple the price. So that's how it goes. Now, for business presentations, we do not use the 200,000 floor price for projections. What we go more conservative, what we use is 100,000 pesos only. We go ultra conservative. So using 100,000 pesos selling price per kilogram, one hectare can produce 83 million pesos after five years. I'd like to repeat this. One hectare can produce 83 million pesos after five years. You would understand now when I say the figure I am throwing at you is ultra conservative. This is a set to fail value because I have shown you the actual existing figures for selling agar wood. And then you will see here we give an example. So you plant 833 trees per hectare with each tree producing one kilogram only after five years we set this one up conservatively again, because when we conducted the validation studies for production in 2020, each tree can produce two, three, four, five kilograms after five years. But we don't want expectations raising too high for us. So for you to produce 83 million after five years requires a capitalization of around 2.2 million pesos. And it's a span of five years. Um, 
I won't be discussing the full details for this. So this is just the overview, overview for the economics and the profitability. Now, for this, as a business, there are several choke points. One is lack of reliable information. So you have to get past the scams. Once you get past the scams, congratulations on getting reliable information like where you are right now. Now, the next, the next thing is um, a lot of people want to do this, but they do not understand the value chain. The value chain requires several steps. You need to make them survive. You need to go through legalities technology, marketing, and sales. Bureaucracy is part of the value chain. So a lot of people do not understand this. So the, Agarwood is an export business. You need sales contracts. You need consistent and large volumes. So you, you have to deal with all this. And the last one would be high cost. Currently, it's still quite expensive to venture into as a business because of the demand, of course. Now, um, I was hes hesitant at first to show this slide, but this is one of the reasons why we, why we generated a lot of partnerships over the last three years. It's because of the technology that we provide. That th this table will explain everything. The yellow column is our technology. The green column on the right is the technology which everybody else in the world uses. So we are the only technology in the Philippines with this one. If you compare the outputs, the harvest cycle, for example, is five years and less. I'd like to repeat that. We produce we produce agarwood in five years or less. So compared to the conventional technology, it's seven to 12 years. The grade of the production we produce is higher. It's grade A versus rejects for the other side. So the con respective pricing is there on your screen. Volume-wise, it's there. We produce more volume. So um, the bottom line is we are the only technology in the Philippines which can make one hectare produce 4.8 to 9.6 million US dollars. These are the non-conservative figures now in a span of five years. So I, I repeat, the bottom line is we have the technology to make one hectare produce 4.8 to 9.6 million US dollars in a span of five years. Now, with this business, the other technologies available, even if you get 80% of the profit shares, can only give you 190,000 to 380,000 US dollars, but you have to wait for seven to 12 years. So time, time is a big difference. This is what's unique about the technology in the company we have. So um, other than that, we have thought about 20 years, 30 years into the Philippine agroforestry industry. So we really we really want to build an industry. So at Philippine Sakura Parks, I'll be discussing that. Timber plantations, I'll be discussing that as well. We have others, carbon credits, non-timber forest products, up to CSR climate activities. So there. Now, these are what our partners they say they want about our business. I'll just discuss the first four. So the first four is the time to quality of life. Well, we have a fast ROI. It's five years and less, less than five years. The income is quite massive. It's unbelievably massive. You have to, if you, you're hearing this for the first time, you have to do your research just to validate the figures I'm saying. The, the thing is it's legal. And it's renewable. You can repeat this year after year after year. And we provide the whole value chain from production to legalization to sales. So all the other benefits are there. This is very brief discussion on the agri-wood industry. I think this is my last slide. Now, Philippine flower tourism is a very big business also. So I'll be proceeding now to Philippine flower tourism. So Japan, except for the COVID period, was making $6 billion every year. $6 billion every year except COVID. The Philippines can do this too. So before I show you the economics of the Philippine flowering tourism industry, let me introduce you to our natural resources. 
This is Jadevine. So Jadevine, we developed this for events places. Weddings, baptisms, events places. It's very beautiful. You know what country propagates Jade Vine? Countries in Europe, not the Philippines. And this is Bagras, Rainbow Eucalyptus. This is beautiful, 12 months a year. I like the next one better. This is Malabayabas. It's really red. If you encounter this in the forest, you feel you're enchanted. Next one is Malabulak. So Malabulak is going to be flowering all over the Philippines, Luzon and Visayas, this month, this month of February. The picture on top is a Malabulak Park in China because they also have Malabulak. The picture on the bottom is a Malabulak Park in Taiwan because they also have Malabulak. Now, we have a lot of Malabulak in the Philippines, but we don't have this. Don't you think it's about time we caught up to our other Asian neighbors? It's just a matter of planting and arrangement. That's how simple it works. Now, this one is called Balay Lamok. Uh, Balay, Lamok is, Balay Lamok is park material in Japan. They call this the sacred pear tree. So they put this in parks in Japan, Hong Kong, China, Singapore, and Taiwan. In all these places, Balay Lamok is park material. In the Philippines, Balay Lamok is uling material. It's charcoal. Can you imagine that? Ino uling lang sa atin to. They make this into charcoal. They don't understand that if you put this in even a small property, it will start flowering in two to three years. It will flower for two months and you generate income year after year after year. That's how simple it works. The one you see on the screen, Patalsik Pula, it's more beautiful than cherry blossoms when you see it up close and personal. It's quite unique to the Philippines. Cherry blossom is a two-month flowering industry in Japan. This one can bloom for four to six months. So imagine the economic potential for the Philippines or even just your own property. I'll show you the economics now. So this is a um, cost-benefit summary for one hectare. Let me guide you through it. If you plant now, they will start flowering in three to five years, at which time you will start generating 100 to 1,000 visitors per day. Of course, it will depend on your accessibility and the parking space. So there are factors. But if you are generating 500 visitors per day, and you charge them 100 pesos each, and you keep your park open for eight months, you're already earning 11 million pesos every year. That's just from entrance fees alone. If you put a coffee shop inside, if you put a restaurant, if you put a souvenir shop inside, then you multiply your income several fold. That is how simple it is. That is how Japan generates $6 billion every year. Very simple. And I just showed you, we have a lot of beautiful trees. We are very rich. So I think this is my last slide for parks for the flower tourism industry. So I'm sorry, they're very brief. We have more detailed discussions every week through our webinars. But this is just not to flood your brains, just give you a brief overview of what the Philippines is capable of. So we're proceeding now to the Philippine timber industry. The gray, the gray rose are all exotic species. They are not from the Philippines. Jamelina, Falcata, Mahogany. Now, the yellow columns, uh, the yellow rose are all native species. Nara, Nato, White Lawaan. Now, if you will notice, Jamelina is very fast to harvest five to ten years but so is white lawaan real world evidence shows that white lawaan grows as fast as gemelina some arguments but real world evidence dictates this if you compare the income of both you will notice that white lawaan generates 3.8 million pesos gross income per hectare every five to ten years versus the 1.4 million pesos per hectare of gemelina every five to ten years 
what we'd like to point out is you are supporting biodiversity by planting native trees and you are generating more income. That's what we'd like to point out. Here are some, uh, these are my references. Uh, here are some proof of concept. What you see on your screen is nato, nato tree. So nato grows as fast as mahogany, which is harvestable in 10 to 15 years. M uh, mahogany sells in lumber yards today at 45 pesos per board feet. Nato, we import from Malaysia at 120 pesos per board feet. So it's times three. And we don't have to import nato because we have a lot of nato in the Philippines. It's, again, it's a matter of management. Next one. White lawaan has been shown through real-world evidence to grow as fast as gemelina. This is a 21-year-old white lawaan. We all thought it takes 50 years to harvest, but this 21-year-old tree is, is being hugged by two grown men. They're not kids. Grown men. So it goes to show you that it grows very fast. And it's more expensive than exotic species. So this is the potential we're talking about. We're talking about the Philippine potential. We're comparing ourselves to New Zealand, which is the top exporter of wood in the world. We have roughly the same size. Not everything is comparable, of course. Look at their shareholders. Look at our shareholders for the timber industry. Now, New Zealand produces rad radiata pine. Radiata pine takes 30 years to harvest. You compare it to us, we have white lawan, which is 5 to 10 years to harvest. Now, radiata pine, which is 30 years to harvest, sells in Wilcon Depot at 90 pesos per board feet. White lawan, which sells as Miranti, which is only 5 to 10 years to harvest, is sold in Wilcon Depot for 240 pesos per board feet. And now, look at our incomes. New Zealand was generating 312 billion in pesos last 2018. This was annually. The Philippines, we were earning negative 15 billion in 2017. We were export, uh, we were importing our requirements. So again, I, I'd like to say we're we're very rich. We just it just needs uh, the Philippines is very rich. We just need to manage our resources very well. Um this may be my last slide. Uh, so, yeah, that was my last slide on the economic potential. I'd like to divert you to something else. So the question on your screen is, when do we feel the sense of being Filipino? So um, the clues are quite obvious, quite obvious on your screen. So uh, let, me, let me tell you the stories. In the emergency room, every time Manny Pacquiao fights, we do not get patients in the emergency room. The patients only come in after his fights. That's when we. That's when the whole country feels a sense of being a Filipino. And then there's Miss Universe. So Miss Universe, we feel the sense of being a Filipino. Um, the Filipina is the most beautiful race. Is the most beautiful woman in the whole world. So um, husbands appreciate your wives. They are the most beautiful women in the whole world. And it gives us a sense of being Filipinos. And when we are being bullied by China in the West Philippine Sea, we get the sense of being a Filipino. We'd, we'd like to add one more. Um, so we'd like to redefine Filipino pride and heritage. That's why we are creating Amana. I'm the, sure. So, Pamana is a book of Philippine heritage trees. It's a book which tells the next generations about our abundant inheritance as Filipinos. Um, the Pamana is a book which we plan to publish. So, we're raising funds to publish this book, and we need support for this. Again, the intention of this book is to redefine Filipino pride and heritage. We want a sense of being Filipino, not just <clears throat> not just being a sense of Ilocano or Mindanao or Manileño. 
a really integrated sense of being a Filipino with pride and the sense of heritage. So, this is my last slide. Oh, no, 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 this is my uh, request for help slide. <laughs> we need partners. Um, we need your help in building the Philippine industries that we have. We do not have it yet. We're trying to build it now. We need your help in building this. If you have land and financial capability, then we can do very, very well with what resources you have. And we'd like you to help us redefine Filipino pride and heritage. I'd like to, I'd like to describe it for you. God has blessed our country with natural resources. The natural resources we have, half of the world does not have this. We are very, very rich. It should make us proud as Filipinos. So we are building this for our country, for our next generation, and we would like your support for this. So that's it. Uh, I'll pause here. I mean, Mr. President, if you don't mind, as you know, I ask questions at the very end, uh, but I'd like to ask this question because um, we'd like the international audience to to get the answer to these questions. Um, before we start into questions such as what trees are most efficient, etc., I'd like, first of all, to say we like the ROI business board because we are business people. But more importantly, uh, you did answer my question, how can we help you. Now you give two directions, right? Building industries and then redefining. Now, actually redefining, I don't know if that's our expertise, but you can tell us that too. But in building industries, I think that's our expertise. So Dr. M, I'd like to ask this question. Now. When you say you want us to help industries, uh, can you be more specific? Given our audience is not government, however, we are good in finance and in network, et cetera. Could you be more specific about the ways we can help build industries? Yeah, before we go on, let me give you some examples. If building industries entails uh, getting people uh, who have project proposals and cannot get through because of the bureaucracy of banks, we're in touch with the top people in the banks, especially the banks we can help there. If building industries means going to DNR and telling about something they don't understand, then we can help in government interaction, for example, one of our key people is now the head of exports appointed uh, three weeks ago for agriculture. But given that agriculture is related natural resource, that's fine. And finally, um, uh, by the grace of God, uh, we, our foundation got involved in water, etc. And the ENR secretary, uh, whom we talked to at the start, but talked to recently, uh, called us on a weekend in our house um, to tell us that she wants us to help her with things and of course we don't know much about fighting people who you know deforest our <laughs> and smugglers and, and the people who rape our forest but we do no business so uh, we'd like to know what kind of things we have because uh, i was in the government one third of my life two thirds of my life private sector my big regret is that unlike thailand and vietnam our government does not talk to the private sector enough well maybe they do some in dti the i'm telling you uh, almost, uh, uh, almost <laughs> really bad. So this is the first time we have a businessman held having agriculture, etc. So can you just answer my question? Uh, uh, I think uh, helping us uh, redefine heritage. I think we're okay at that not so good. We're with the building industry. So can just maybe so we don't take up too much time. Give us two or three areas where we in the business sector can help you. I mean, we in the business sector meaning. The people attending, the people attending are usually uh, young entrepreneurs, but some are old people, uh, you know, uh, such as Cesar Virata, Prime Minister, etc. So please tell us two or three ways mm. how we can help you build industries. Um, we'd like the network, the expertise. So we want experts helping us, communicating with us to talk to a lot more people about this, to share this. That's one. So that includes government. The second is um, we have lots of land, but not so much finances. So we have a lot of people who want to do this, generate income as well. Financing is a problem. I think that's where a lot of you can come in. I think also that a lot of 
um, a lot of businessmen here have lands which are viable for doing this business. You can host this business and generate the resources we have. I would like to say that what, what, what we are actually planting is Philippine currency. Timber, flower tourism, is a currency which does not undergo inflation. So it is something we can trade internationally as our Philippine currency. And if you can read bit behind the lines, we, Dendrotonics, is positioning to be a bank regulating this currency. Would you like to join us in doing this, this thing? So financing is one aspect. Now, when I say helping redefine Filipino pride and heritage, the first the, the the very first thing we can do is we'd like help in funding the book. You can sponsor or donate for the publishing of the book. And we should give this to as many persons as possible so we can ignite the spirit of nationalism, especially to the next generation of Filipinos. I hope I made it simple. Okay, Mr. President, just a quick response, then we'll open the forum. Uh, regarding network and government, sure, uh, we'll call you after this. Tell us who you want to speak to in our department, right? Um, regarding financing, um, we kind of don't want to start from such. Our connection is to the top leaders of banks, and therefore we need them to come in feasibility studies. We don't want to do it from scratch, right? Uh, because uh, they can go on their own, but when they get a block, uh, then they can go to us, because we've, we've done it before, where we talked to a land bank president and she opened her eyes. Regarding the um, the lands, well, uh, it's up to you guys what you want to do. But the good thing is that if any of you get it, since we're A, we're A B, C, D with MAP, correct? If I do it, we can make it uh, one of our models. One of our models right now is how how one of our people went to the Muslim area and and they traded their guns for for selling coffee. You know? So I like the fact about you ask us to do lands, but I'm telling you, you you don't MAP, you get some of your friends or you do it. And we can highlight it. And the fact that you're backed by MAP, ABCD, it will have a little more traction when we go to ANC or other <laughs> media things. Regarding redefining the thing, redefining the book, fine, fine, fine. But actually, I want to tell you this, no? By the grace of God, you know what God, so do we, right? By the grace of God, uh, tomorrow we're having a meeting with a very top person. And basically, by the grace of God, <laughs> we've been writing for years, you know, um, by the grace of God, um, we're in contact with top people in DNA. I mean, we're talking about vice presidents, Duterte, right? And basically, we're not put it here, but we never had a connection to a vice president, you know I mean? And we have that connection now. Tomorrow, we're starting it. And basically, uh, my brother wrote the book uh, with Hearts of Flame. Um, he's a former understudy of education, a Christian brother who left the Christian brothers <laughs> one month before final vows. And he got education to write the memo saying that the students should read this, correct? So in education, I mean, that's why, I mean, you get him to write something like that or even publish. I mean, you know, I find government kind of hard to deal with, but they have our tax money, they have the network and, you know, God gave them the duty. If they're not doing the duty, we can help them do their duty by having constructive criticism, not negative, but constructive, always with suggestions. And actually this this thing, uh, tomorrow's the meeting, right? What the grace of God's happening tomorrow for God's sake. And here you are with this book. And my brother had this little book that he did, right? And it was put in a memo. You should already read <laughs> it. was sold out. But I'm just telling you that, you know, we can tell our friends to buy the book, but you get education to see, right? And you get to all the schools, you know, I mean, that's really something, right? And as you know, we have to, well, we are both in the same, all of us in this foundation and you, we, we're we we're reimagining our nation, correct? I mean, there is, of course, uh, Bagong Pilipinas and last Sunday and all that. And actually you look for the good, right? You look good in everything, right? And there's good stuff in Bagong Pilipinas, right? But instead of being skeptical, um, let's look for the good stuff. And education, uh, we know about confidential funds, et cetera, right? But, you put aside, that's called static. In the meantime, let's not be distracted. Let's go for the real thing. The real thing is they have the power and the money, et cetera, right? Uh, I'm telling you, I have personal experience with, with them with the feeding program, right? Uh, basically, they're changing because it was really a big waste. They're changing, so let's be optimistic. We here in ABCD, 
we don't look at the bad thing, you know, we look at the good thing and build on it, no? Because there's too many people criticizing not enough building. And you, you're build, 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 you know? <laughs> and actually, and I like the fact that you end with a, with a thing from God because, you know, God helps a lot, right? <laughs> and we don't, if we don't talk, we get misguided, you know what I mean? So I like that. So basically, Mr. President, I'm sorry, it's longer than usual <laughs> that I speak, but it's truly exciting. And we intend to talk to him right after this forum. And we, by the grace of God, we've gotten money, contacts, etc. cetera, while the poor have nothing, right? And here's this guy going from a high, high paid surgeon thing, taking a bloody big risk, right? And going to mm -hmm. something which is li right along our lines. See, we're ROI people, you know, we like sincerity, but profits would be more important. Well, it's uh, I, without profit, you cannot make our sincerity act because we have, we're not sustainable. So you're into profits, which is great. So, Mr. Uh, President, uh, that's all. Perhaps you can open the forum now, and I promise not to talk again until the very end. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Ernie. Always a lot of... Uh, <laughs> uh, your push for action is uh, very, very well appreciated, uh, especially since we're looking at uh, poverty alleviation through job creation. So agroforestry is, I do agree, a very under undervalued shall we say, sector of, uh, of agriculture in the Philippines, especially considering our vast natural resources. Okay, um, so I'll open the floor to questions. Uh, so just a few rules again. The first one is that uh, there are a few ways that we line up for uh, people for questions. The first one is you have an option at the bottom of your screen that says reactions. Um, if you uh, click that, uh, there, that, that will show you uh, an option to raise your hand. So for example, right now I'm raising my hand. You see that there's a little yellow hand on the top left corner of my uh, video uh, of my face. Uh, so you can do that. Um, and that will line you up for any questions. Uh, failing that, uh, well, if you're on your phones, if you're on your smartphones, uh, depending on whether you're Android or iPhone, uh, you have either three horizontal lines or three dots. Uh, so you tap that, and then that should show you an option for reactions. You tap that, and then that will still that will also show you the option to raise your hand. That will line you up for any questions as well. Uh, um, failing it, that, you can... yeah, Mr. President, just one thing: we have six minutes left, then we end. Then the international focus is lost. So, perhaps in the last in the last six minutes, you get the most important question. But I want to let you know from uh, nine to ten, it's very very productive. But then, anyway, Mr. President, just to let you know, we got five minutes left, and then. Maybe you should, uh, you know, get the one with the, you know, the most important question. I know you don't know it, but it's up to you. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, barring that, you can uh, leave your question in the chat box. So you can do that and then I'll line you up for any questions. Really failing everything, I'm going to ask Vivian and Bernie to help, you know, catch my attention if someone's trying to, to ask a question. Okay, uh, so, uh, and also please, uh, during the formal session, let's limit our question to one. Uh, if you have a follow up, make sure just that it's it is related to your previous question. Uh, otherwise, I will give way to somebody else. Okay, Oscar Barella, please come in. Yeah, doctor, uh, what's your budget for printing your book? We're thinking about three million pesos, one point five to print actual copies. Ah, uh, three million. Yeah, about three million, and then one point five to do the launch event. The three million includes free electronic copies for schools. Okay, uh, so do you uh, are you going to sell the book uh, through bookstores or is this free or uh, uh, the in other words, uh, uh, what's the economics? Do you have any? Okay, the electronic copies. The economics and that book is free. Ah, okay. Yes, we're we're also planning to raise hard copies for the books that we can sell, so that would that would potentially generate income as well. Uh, so so that book that you're talking about is electronic. Okay. Oh, the, the, um, ele the electronic book would be free for all the schools for all the next generation of Filipinos, but the hard copies would be for sale, so it can generate sustainable income as well. How much per book expected? Uh, we're 
we're projecting it at 1,500 per book or higher. All right. So yeah, thanks very much for that. Um, are there other questions from the audience? Julius uh, Ramon Uy was raising his ah. hand. All right. Thanks very much, Bernie. Uh, Ramon, please. Good morning, <laughs> doctor. Uh, excellent presentation. How could we engage with you here in the Gross Occidental? We have a, yeah, anytime could you come over here and make some presentation or kind of like that? In a way, because uh, we've already been engaging with the uh, state university and one of the state university in Negros have 5,000 hectares. Which, uh, we could possibly engage with you. So what what oh, were the requirements and so on? So yes, I'll I'll get in contact with you if you're if you're available. When when will, are you going to be available to have some engagement in Negros? Oh, actual okay. engagement, actual. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you also. All right. Thanks very much, uh, Robert. You found yeah. Thank you, Julius. Yeah. Well, I want to ask our speaker. Uh, what are the top three? Because na na dinik ko yung patalsik pula or something. That's one. Yeah, okay, that's... the top three, uh, really most beautiful uh, three in the Philippines. So, top or three would... endemic. Top yeah. one would be the Patal Sekula. Top okay. two would be Balay Lamok. Top three would be Magkono. Balay Lamok? Yes. Okay. And then the third one is? Magkono. Magkono. Okay, where can you buy this? Um, Philippine Native Trees, which is a Facebook organization, has a lot of nurseries all over the Philippines. Uh, so okay. you, you can reach them through me, or if you want to go local, we can refer you to a nursery na malapit sa inyo. Okay, so uh, how can I reach you, uh, uh, of course, uh, Akrain? Oh, uh, um, let me... Type. Uh, my, my, number is, my number is in the chat. It's okay. 917. It's 917. 917. 551. 551. 5029. 5029. Yes. Okay. So fantastic uh, uh, presentation and uh, information. Do you know do you think do you know anything uh is available in Subic Forest or na ito, any of these three? Uh Subic uh, SBMA in uh Sambales? Zambales has patal sikula in the wild. Ayon. Okay, Zambales. Okay, okay, good. No, so I I admire everything except I just wanted to add a frame. No, ah, uh, sabi mo ah, uh, you'll be proud about uh the beauty of the Filipinos, Filipinas. No, and then the how do you say that the other one is the um, ani isang sinabi mo yung si Manny Pacquiao. Okay, you mm -hmm. forgot the music, the musicians Filipino. So, because we're from Ipanko, Yamaha. Yeah, so, we have a lot of good musicians all over the world you can also be proud of. So, dagdag mo yan sa PowerPoint mo, mga musicians. You. When you go all around the world, including mga, what do you call that, di mga, uh, sa mga sa London and sa New York uh, Broadway, we have very, very good singers from Lea Salonga, the Cocoy Laurels, and of course, uh, mga iba pang very, very good talents. So, dagdag mo yan sa PowerPoint mo. Thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for the reminder. Yeah, you'll be also proud to be a Filipino when you hear them sing and then see them and they're being admired all over the world. And there are thousands all around the world now. When you go to a place, pag may kumakanta, magaling, Filipino yun. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Very much. Uh, and I think that also answers the the question that came up in the chat box from uh Mrs. Stephan or Miss Stephanie Montubig. Uh, she's asking where we can buy quality seedlings of na Philippine native flowering trees. So, uh, you already mentioned the F FB group, uh, Philippine native trees, uh, for that one. Uh, and then we have another question from Vicky. Uh, Vicky, our vice president. Uh, maybe we have a copy by email to the map secretary of your PowerPoint presentation. Uh, is it okay with you that we share your presentation? It's okay. To our... All right. Thank you very much. So I hope that answers Vicky's question. Okay. And it is nine o'clock. Uh, very sorry to to everyone who's uh, who's joining us uh, through our social media uploads. Uh, 
uh, unfortunately, this is the extent of what you can uh, get for free online. Um, so as I mentioned, the Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation is uh, a nonprofit member-supported organization. If you'd like to join us for our informal sessions where you can engage with the speaker and with our wide network of agribusiness and countryside development organizations and professionals, do consider joining us as a member. It's to your generosity and support that we are able to bring you our sessions each week. Our links are in the description. Uh, please give your, uh, introduce yourselves to us and we'd be very happy to have you on board. If our session today has brought you any value, uh, if you have any questions or you have uh, your own experience with agroforestry, uh, especially now that we've talked about, let's say, do you have any experience with um, native, um, Philippine native uh, trees, especially flowering trees? Uh, do you have any experience working with Philippine timber species or with um, agarwood? Uh, do let us know. We'd be very happy to learn from your experience. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll try to share that with the speaker and uh, we'll try to get back to you in the comments below. So let's flash our Certificate of Appreciation on screen for Dr. Efraim M. Cercado. So the Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation, in partnership with the Management Association of the Philippines, together with our special partner institutions, senior special partner institutions, corporate members, and individual members, all of us here present this Certificate of Appreciation to Dr. Efraim Cercado for his invaluable support in the advocacy and promotion of agribusiness and countryside development, and for his commendable and unselfish services rendered to this foundation as our resource for our fourth weekly online meeting of 2024, this 30th of January, Makati City, Philippines. Uh, signed by our chairman, Ernie Ardonez, and myself as our president. And may I now invite everyone to please turn on your cameras uh, so that we can, <laughs> we can have a group photo. <clears throat> please, it's a it, it's great. Um, got a great audience this morning from all over the country. Big smiles, everyone. Uh, if I can ask Vivian to count us in. All right, sir. We have two pages. Po. <clears throat> so, smile on three, one, two, three. <laughs> and then for the second page, po. all right. Um. Smile on three, one, two, three. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks very much to everyone. And uh, before before those of you have to go can go, uh, do we have a topic for next week already, Ernie? Ah, uh, yes, we're talking about you know, seafood as the food during the climate and you know, all crisis. Mm, all right, yeah. Um, off the of our previous sessions on uh, seaweed as well um, from last year. So seaweed is also another undervalued industry in the Philippines. It makes up so much of our exports and we're actually really good at it. But uh, yeah, it, it seems like we, we're not really giving it the, the, the proper appreciation. So thanks very much, Bernie, for, for bringing uh, Dr. Roleda in uh, for this one. And I hope this will be uh, another interesting topic uh, for all of our members and for our audience uh, worldwide next week. Okay, so with that, um, again, I have to say, I, I, very unfortunately for the people who are joining us um, online, uh, this is the limit of what you can get for free. And uh, once again, I will repeat the Agribusiness and Countryside Development Foundation. Thanks you for joining us this morning. Uh, we are a member-supported nonprofit organization. And um, if you are interested in joining us for informal sessions after uh, the formal sessions that we upload online for free, uh, do consider joining us as a member. It is through your generosity and support we're able to do what we do. Uh, but um, I'm sorry, so I have to say goodbye. Uh, we'll see you all in our next uploads for uh, for CVs. Uh, and for those of you in the audience, we do have to go ahead. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but do stay, if you can, for our informal session where we continue uh, our conversation with uh, Doc M. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>